Hey everybody, today I'm going to do a side-by-side -side comparison video between two different Milwaukee M18 fuel half-inch drive high-torque brushless impact wrenches. Now these are actually the exact same model being 2763 and the one with the black protective boot is the one that I did my original review video on over two years ago and that video has over 200,000 views. Now since then this has been put through a lot of work. I've loaned it out to different mechanics, it's done hundreds of tire changes as well as removed suspension parts, done extensive torque testing and it's really gone through probably 100 or maybe 200 battery charges. When we look at this one, it's brand new out of the box. It's never even had a socket installed on the anvil and it should have the maximum performance. So what this video is really designed to do is to take a look at one that's been used for two years and we're going to see if there's been a drop in performance, specifically the amount of torque that it can produce. We're going to be looking at reverse torque testing as well as forward torque testing using Skidmore Wilhelms. And when we compare the two side by side, we'll be able to see firsthand if there's been any drop in power over the last two years. There are two different ways that you can buy this impact wrench, and depending on your needs, as well as if you're already part of Milwaukee's M18 lineup, you can pick the right one for you. Now, if you don't need additional batteries or additional chargers, they do sell the impact wrench as a bare tool with nothing else included. However, if you're new to the lineup or you just want additional batteries and a charger, then you can go ahead and pick up one of the kits. That will include the impact wrench, two XC 5 amp hour high capacity batteries, a dual voltage charger that will charge the M18 as well as M12 batteries, as well as a blow mold carrying case that does have a handle. Here's a closer look at both impacts side by side and you can see other than some dirt, oil and then use on the older one, it looks pretty much the same as the brand new one. Now like I said, I do have the removable protective boot on here. It's done a great job at protecting it against falls, dragging across concrete or even things falling on it and it does keep everything from getting beat up and scratched up and I would highly suggest picking one of these up. Now I do want to point out that this one is going to be completely unused. There's never been a socket installed on the anvil and the operation is going to be completely identical between the two of these because they have not done any updates. They both have two different speed or power modes. The red portion is going to be a very hard plastic with the black portion being a softer rubber overmold. And looking at the older version, even with shop chemicals, grease and oil falling on this, we've never had a problem with anything bubbling up or peeling off the plastic. Taking a closer look at both of the anvils, you can see exactly what I'm talking about. The new one has never had anything installed on it. There's not even a scratch. And then the older version has been extensively used, but it's still in perfect condition. We don't have any problem with anything malformed, cracked, or otherwise damaged. And even the friction ring on it is still in excellent condition. Like any of the other tools in Milwaukee's M18 lineup, the battery is going to be on a slide rail system. To remove it, you'll take the large red button on both sides of the front of the battery pack, Press and hold those in and then just pull the battery pack forward. It's going to slide right off. You can take a fully charged one, slide it in place, and when you hear the click, it's going to be locked in and ready to go. Now the other thing to note, with any of the M18 tools, they do not have a fuel gauge on the tool, however it is on the front of the battery pack. You can simply press the button on the front, you'll see LEDs light up, and it will show you what the current charge of the battery pack is. There are two different speed or power modes and you'll change those at the base of the grip. They have a button in between number one and number two with a corresponding LED that will light up. If you don't see an LED on either side, it means that you cannot switch between the modes. You'll first need to press it on the trigger. You'll see one of those LEDs light up and in this case we're in speed or power mode two which is going to be the high torque mode. When I press in on the variable speed trigger, you'll hear it move very quickly and it's putting out maximum torque. But let's say you want to run some lug nuts down, that's not a safe mode to use because you could easily strip them out. What you'll do is press that. It's going to switch over to speed or power mode 1, which is going to be a very low RPM and low torque mode. And now when I press it on the trigger, you'll see how fast the anvil is going to spin. So that's going to be much safer for smaller fasteners or just snugging something up. If you're going to run down lug nuts, you never want to be in speed mode too because you will easily damage it, costing yourself a lot of extra work. 
Here's a closer look at the impact wrench, and I want to point out the dimensions on this, as well as the weight, are measured with a high capacity 5 amp hour battery pack. Overall, it's coming in at just over 10 inches high, 9 inches long, and then it's going to be 3 inches wide. The weight, along with that battery pack, is coming in at 7 pounds, 8.5 ounces. And if you choose to install the rubber protective boot, it only increases the weight to 7 pounds, 14 ounces. However, if you don't choose to install a protective boot, there are still protections built in, being this large rubber bumper on the middle of the housing, on the rear of the housing, as well as along the base of the battery packs. Even if you set it flat on a surface, the only thing touching would be those rubber points. It's not going to move around on you, and even if it's a concrete floor, it's not going to scratch anything, unless you have a large socket on the front of here tipping the front of it forward. But for maximum protection, it is a good idea to pick up that rubber protective boot. It completely encapsulates the entire top of the tool, and it would prevent it not only from scratches, but also from damaging what you set it down on. The anvil is known as a friction ring or hog ring anvil, and it does not require any additional tools to install or remove sockets. You'll take your impact socket, line it up with the anvil, and then just press it into place. At this point, the tool is ready to use, and then once you're done using it, you can just grab onto that socket, pull it directly off, and the tool is ready to store. Just above the variable speed trigger, if you press it on it, you'll notice an LED light come on. Now if you are in a low light situation, let's say on the side of the road changing tires, this would be very beneficial because it will allow you to line your socket up with the lug nuts very easily. In this case, I'll go ahead and take this socket, line it up with the bolt on the Skidmore Wilhelm, and you can see without the LED light, it's hard to line everything up. But when I press in on the trigger, it does light everything up, making it very easy to align our socket. Now for a torque test, we're going to be using a Skidmore Wilhelm Model R with a one and a quarter inch bolt and a two inch nut. With this combination, I can accurately measure bolt tension in pounds up to 110,000. We'll take whatever the reading is, divide it by 70, and that's going to give us our working torque rating. Now this is actually a reverse threaded nut and bolt, so the first test we're going to do is the reverse torque rating, and we'll be in speed or power mode two, which is going to be the high torque mode. We'll do three runs with each impact, alternating impacts as well as high capacity battery packs between each run, and I will be changing out the lubrication on the back of the nut, on the washer face as well as the threads, with a fresh coating of R-0050 test bolt lube from Skidmore Wilhelm. And to give us extremely accurate results, I have a brand new SunX Model 264 impact socket, and I want to thank SunX for sending this over for our testing. Now lastly, each impact will have a 15 second run time, and that's going to give us extremely accurate and consistent results. So we just got done with the reverse torque testing and the numbers were very consistent with each impact. The older 2763, which is roughly two years old, had an average reading of 72,500 pounds of bolt tension. Divide that by a factor of 70 because of the nut and bolt combination we're using and it means that its reverse working torque rating at a 15 second run time is 1,036 foot pounds. The new 2763, which has had zero use, had an average reading of 71,333 pounds of bolt tension. Divide that by a factor of 70, and its reverse working torque rating is 1,019 foot-pounds.
For a forward torque test, we'll be using a Skidmore Wilhelm Model M with a one and a quarter inch bolt and a two inch nut. However, these have right hand threads. Now this will allow us to accurately measure bolt tension in pounds also up to 110,000. We're going to conduct this test exactly the same way as the reverse torque test. So we just got done with all the forward torque testing and the numbers were once again very consistent with each impact. The old 2763 had an average of 60,333 pounds of bolt tension. Divide that by a factor of 70 and its forward working torque rating after a 15 second run time in mode 2 is coming in at 862 foot pounds. The new 2763 had an average of 59,833 pounds of bolt tension. Divide that by a factor of 70 and its forward working torque rating is coming in at 855 foot-pounds. So now you've seen a side-by-side -side comparison between two different Milwaukee M18 Fuel 2763 half-inch high torque impact wrenches. Now these are going to be completely the same unit and the one that has the black cover on it, it's simply a protective boot. We can go ahead and just pull that right off and you can see underneath it looks identical to the brand new version. Now it does have a little more dirt and grease on it and this does a great job at protecting everything but it will not keep it looking brand new unfortunately over extended use. Now you do want to keep in mind as far as the torque test goes, we didn't experience any power loss with the two-year model and it actually had better ratings in forward and reverse than the brand new version. Now using them side by side, I could not tell a difference, but after those 15 second run times, the two-year-old model that I did my original review on and it's had extensive use actually came out on top and it suffered no power loss over that time frame. If you're looking at a pneumatic impact wrench, typically they're strongest when you first get them. And as you use them and as they get dirty inside, they continually lose power and eventually need to be rebuilt. We didn't have any problem with the 2763 and it actually got its best torque ratings to date in this torque test. Now the 2763 as well as any of the cordless Milwaukee tools will carry a five year warranty and these batteries as well as the dual voltage charger will carry a three year warranty. So if you run into a problem with it during that time frame, just contact Milwaukee and they will fix or replace it for you free of charge. If you like this video, please click like. If you like my channel, please click subscribe and thanks for watching.